Today I want to look at what I'll call a hyperbolic approach to maybe the most famous number sequence, the Fibonacci numbers. And well, let's jump right into it. So we will show that for all non-negative integers n, the nth Fibonacci number is equal to 2 over i to the n times the square root of 5 all times the hyperbolic sign evaluated at n times the log of i times phi, where phi is the golden ratio. Now, before we get started, let's recall how the Fibonacci numbers are defined. So I'll take the following two seeds, f0 is 0, and then f1 is 1, and then we have the familiar two-step recursion. So fn plus 2 is fn plus fn plus 1. One term is equal to the sum of the previous two terms. And then phi, the golden ratio, it is the unique positive number satisfying this condition right here. So phi is equal to 1 plus 1 over phi. And observe here that I'm going to stay away from maybe the radical expression which is equal to phi, you know, having to do with like 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And I'm also going to stay away from the well-known Binet's formula for the Fibonacci numbers. We're going to approach this a little bit differently, and not because it's easier, but because I want to highlight a way of showing that two sequences are the same. Okay, so let's get into our proof. So here we're going to set a sub n equal to this right-hand side. So we have 2 over i to the n square root of 5. And then, well, I'm just going to copy this over. So we have hyperbolic sine of n times the log of i times phi. Okay. And then, well, what do we want to show? Well, we'll we will show the following three things. So the first thing, and then the second thing, and then the third thing. So the first thing that we'll show is that a sub 0 is 0. Then we'll show that a sub 1 is 1. And then we'll show, show that a n plus a n plus 1 is equal to a n plus 2. So in other words, this sequence has the same seeds and follows the same defining recursion as the Fibonacci sequence. And if we can show that, then this has to be the Fibonacci sequence as these conditions right here and right here uniquely define this sequence of numbers. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's get to it. And maybe in order to get to it, let's start by looking at this hyperbolic sign evaluated at some stuff and see if we can make a simplification of that. Okay, so let's maybe fit that in right here as just a note. So if we do the hyperbolic sine of the log of z, you might say, well, I have a multiplier into the log of z, but in fact, using logarithm rules, I can bring that inside, so we don't really need to worry about that. So anyway, hyperbolic sine of log z, so that's going to be equal to e to the log z minus e to the minus log z all over 2. That's using the definition for the hyperbolic sine. But now what I'll do is I'll take this minus sign here, I'll bring it inside of the logarithm by making that a z to the minus 1, and then, of course, we'll have z minus 1 over z all over 2. So just bringing this down, this is the hyperbolic sign evaluated at the logarithm of z. And that'll be, like, pretty helpful. Okay, so now let's make sure that our sequence satisfies those conditions over there, starting with the seed conditions. So let's calculate a sub 0 using this rule. So we'll have 2 over i sub 0 times, or sorry, i to the 0 times square root of 5 times the hyperbolic sine of 0. But it's well known that the hyperbolic sine is 0 at 0. You can check that using the formula, which is kind of built off of this. 
Okay, so anyway, here we get zero. So that's good news. At least, you know, our zeroth seed lines up. Okay, so actually maybe while we're at it, let's go ahead and put a check mark over here because we've taken care of this. Now let's look at a sub one. So that'll be two over i times the square root of five. And then we'll have the hyperbolic sine evaluated at the log of i times phi. But now let's simply plug that into this formula right here. Notice this two here and this two in the hyperbolic sine formula will cancel. And that'll leave us with one over i times the square root of five. And then we'll have i times phi, and then let's see, minus one over i times phi. Okay, but then what can we do from there? Well, let's maybe bring this i inside and observe that that's gonna leave us with phi plus one over phi over the square root of five. But in order to easily determine what that is, maybe our best bet is to square it to get some simplification. So if we square that, we're gonna have one fifth, and then we'll have phi squared plus one plus one over phi squared. So something like that. And now let's do a little bit of a side calculation over here so that we can aid ourselves in this simplification. So let's start right here and multiply both sides of this defining equation for phi by phi. That'll leave us with phi squared equals phi plus one. Okay, and then let's in turn divide both sides of this equation by phi squared. So let's see, that's gonna leave us with one equals one over phi plus one over phi squared. But then solving for one over phi squared, that'll leave us with one over phi squared equals one minus one over phi. So now let's take that expression for phi squared and that expression for one over phi squared and insert them into what we have down here. So we have a fifth and then we'll have a phi plus one and then plus one more. And then let's see, one over phi squared, we saw that that was one minus one over phi. Okay, great. So we just finished showing that our sequence has the same seeds as the Fibonacci sequence. Next up, we'll show that it also satisfies the same recursion. So in other words, we need to take the sum of a n and a n plus one and hopefully get a n plus two. So let's just write this out. So we'll have one over, sorry, that should be two over i to the n times the square root of five, and then this hyperbolic sign of n log i of phi, or i times phi. And then we'll have plus two over i to the n plus one square root of five, this hyperbolic sign of n plus one times the log of i times phi. Now let's factor out as much as we can and do a simplifying step. So we can factor a two over i to the n square root of five, and then we'll have the hyperbolic sign of log of i to the n phi to the n, that's using logarithm rules on that first term. And then we'll have a plus one over i, that's what's left from this coefficient. 
and then we'll have a hyperbolic sine of i to the n plus 1, phi to the n plus 1. Okay, good. And now let's use that rule that we had. Let's maybe remind ourselves of the rule of how the hyperbolic sine and the logarithm um, worked with each other. And that was something like this. So two hyperbolic sine of log z turned out to be z minus 1 over z. So let's take that 2, bring it inside, and then we'll apply this rule. So that'll leave me with 1 over i to the n root 5. And here I'll have i to the n phi to the n. And then I'll have a minus 1 over i to the n phi to the n. And I'm going to spread them out like this because I'll like maybe meld these two together or interweave these two together from these two terms. Now let's do the other one. So we'll all have a plus 1 over i times i to the n plus 1, phi to the n plus 1, and then minus 1 over i, 1 over i n plus 1, phi n plus 1. Okay, great. So that's what we get from the second bit. So let's maybe color code this a little bit. So from this hyperbolic sign, we get the first and the third term. And then from this second hyperbolic sign, we get the second and the fourth term. Okay, good. So now let's do a bit of simplification. So let's observe that this 1 over n can turn this n plus 1 and just to an n. So I think that's pretty clear. And then this 1 over i here can multiply here and turn that to an n if I change the sign using the fact that i squared is negative 1. Okay, great. So now let's go from there. So we'll have 1 over i to the n square root of 5. Now let's take these first two terms and factor out as much as we can, which is i to the n phi to the n. We'll be left with 1 plus phi. And then we'll do the same thing for the next bit. So let's factor out a minus 1 over i to the n phi to the n. And then we'll be left with 1 minus 1 over phi. So let's see where we're at. So by the defining equation for the golden ratio, we know that 1 plus phi is phi squared. And then by a similar equation, things moved around a little bit we'll see that 1 minus 1 over phi, that was 1 over phi squared. We had that on the board earlier. Okay, great. So let's see, that's going to leave us with a 1 over i to the n root 5. And now we'll have i to the n phi to the n plus 2 minus 1 over i to the n phi to the n plus 2. And that puts us very, very close to being done, so let's finish it up. Okay, so this is where we were on the last board. Now let's finish it up. So I'm going to start by multiplying by i squared over i squared. So I'm going to put the i squared in the denominator outside. So that's going to change this to an n plus 2, and then here I'll have an i squared here. But let's recall that i squared is negative 1, and 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So that means that I can really just put this i squared in the denominator, and that has the same effect. So after all of that, I have 1 over i to the n plus 2, square root of 5. And then I have i to the n plus 2, phi to the n plus 2. And then minus 1 over i to the n plus 2 times phi to the n plus 2. But wrapping that all back together, that's going to turn into the hyperbolic sine of n plus 2 times the log of i times phi with a 2 out front. Again, that's just using all of those translation rules that we had before, but that is simply a n plus 2. Okay, so what have we done here? Well, we've shown that our sequence has the same two seeds as the Fibonacci sequence and satisfies the defining two-step recursion. But that means that our sequence has to be the Fibonacci sequence, and thus, this is an expression for the Fibonacci sequence. And that's a good place to stop.